all that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment. For we have sinned against you and not obeyed your commandments. But give glory to your name and deal with us accordingly to the bounty of your mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our brothers and sisters, coming before God this day, we bring our lives before our loving Saviour. We bring those whom we hold in our hearts, those of whom we are concerned. We bring ourselves humbly before our Saviour, aware that so often we fall away, we fall away from him to our own thoughts, words and actions. Let us place those times before Christ, our loving Saviour. Lord, you were born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, who died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us. And make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading for the book of Nehemiah. In the month of Nisan, the 20th year of King Xerxes, and the wine being my concern, I took up the wine and offered it to the king. Now I had never been downcast before. So the king said, why is your face so sad? Are you not sick, surely? This must be a sadness of your heart. A great fear came over me and I said to the king, may the king live forever. How could my face be other than sad when the city where the tombs of my ancestors are lies in ruins and its gates have been burnt down? For the king, what the king asked is your request. I called on the, Lord, on the God of heaven and made this reply to the king. If it pleases the king and if you are satisfied with your servant, give me leave to go to Judah, to the city of my ancestors' tombs, and rebuild it. The king, with the queen sitting there beside him, said, How long will your journey take and when will you return? So I named a date that seemed acceptable to the king, and he gave me leave to go. I spoke to the king once more. If it pleases the king, could letters be given from the governors of Trans-Euphrates Trans Trans to allow me to pass through to Judah, and also a letter from Asaph, the keeper of the king's park, to supply me with timber for the gates of the city of, of the temple, for the city walls, and for the house I am to occupy. This the king granted me, for the kindly favour of God was with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Zion. On the populace that grew there, we hung up our hearts. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. For it was there that they asked us, our captors for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. Oh, how could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. 
Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. If I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples travelled along, they met a man on the road who said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, Foxes have holes and birds of the air of the air have nests. For the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another to whom he said, Follow me, replied, Let me go and bury my father first. But he answered, Leave the dead to bury the dead. Your duty is to go and spread the news of the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to the, my people at home. Jesus said to him, Once the hand is laid on the plough, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? Well, that gospel we have today is quite a harsh one, isn't it? Um, there's people um, desperate to follow Christ, and he seems to want to examine them. It's very easy to say... Uh, I'll be a Christian, I'll, be a, I'll, I'll follow God. It's very easy to take many of the kind of easy parts of faith. It's very easy to say that I believe I'm being saved. It's very easy to go, I know God loves me, life's going to be fine. But here in the calling of these, these people coming to Christ with the disciples, um, it's so often we, we kind of look at the apostles and go, weren't they good? And these are the other side, they're kind of, coming and looking for, the, looking for that kind of quick fix, that kind of easy life of uh, following Christ. But he knows them. He knows them and he looks into them. And on the first hand, it seems quite difficult. You don't know where I'm going, he says to one of them. Or, you know, you can't go off to a funeral, it sounds like, but leave the dead to bury their dead. And that's not actually about a funeral. That's about your ancestors. That's about leave the past behind. And then you move on when it says, I need to go and say goodbye to the people at home. Jesus says, well, once you start, the journey keeps moving. We definitely have a sense in our Christian lives of life being a journey. All of our kind of um, idea is about on the way. And at the beginning of that gospel, it says that Jesus was on the way. We see our lives as from our very conception to our birth into this world as being an inevitable journey to the next stage of life. We are all right now on a journey in one way or the other and there is a destination. And our journeys through this world may take us on different and varied routes but we are all nevertheless looking at the same destination the place that God puts before us, the restoration of mankind's state, Eden, paradise, heaven, the kingdom, whichever word or description is the one that fits your mood at that time. We look back today at an extraordinary moment in, in our history when we look at uh, the reading for the book of Nehemiah. It's very easy to overlook that. The, the uh, deportation or enslavement to Babylon, which happened, oh, oh, date's gone for a second now, let's say about 3,000 years ago, give or take a century, is a pivotal moment in the people of God's relationship with God. It is seen as the great lesson, the great moment when we see that if we fall away from God whilst we are on the journey, and remember the people of God from Abraham have been promised 
that they will be the inheritors of God's love. They find themselves overthrown and taken away to Babylon, deported, forced out their homes and settlers brought in in their place. And they are taken into a slavery to run, to run the various establishments of Babylon and they are there for generations. Those that are taken will never return to Babylon but it returns for three generations who begin to try and see that the return to that place which represents the place of God on earth may be possible. And as these three generations go by, it represents letting go of their fathers, letting go of their, their history. It, it means letting go of their failings and accepting God's will. That is promise for Isaiah that one day everything may be put right, would indeed be put right. Nehemiah goes to King Artaxerxes, I think that's how we spell it, Artaxerxes anyway. He goes to the king seeking, seeking permission to return. It's a moment when you kind of hold your breath. When you hold your breath. Because he's got to the point, and the generations of those that are deported, both to Babylon and to Egypt, they come to a point where you take a bated breath and say, what will happen? And really what happens next, when it says, Xerxes, the king says, you don't look right, mate. What's on your mind? You look a bit sad. He then stops. And he says, it says, Nehemiah says, I called on the God of heaven and made this reply. And he says, um, if it pleases the king and if you are satisfied with your servant, give me leave. And there's a moment. There's a moment. And God acts. Strangely, yes, with Nehemiah, but through someone who doesn't believe in him. Through the king. Someone of a different faith, of a different culture to the Jews. And who lets him go. And gives him permission to start that rebuilding of Jerusalem, and which will eventually, of course, lead to the temple into which Christ Jesus goes, the one that is destroyed subsequently. But it's nevertheless, we see that despite the time of separation, God's promise will come to fruition. And the people of God, as we know, with Boney M leading them, go singing their hearts out by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down. That's where it comes from. The great yearning to return to Jerusalem. It does come true. And so we see ourselves as Christian people of almost being, in many ways, in a little bit of a wilderness, of being somewhat captive, as it were, in this world, and captive to those things that drag us down, our sin, our greed, our hatred, our envy, our pride, all those things which we know we allow ourselves to be separated from God. But just like with Nehemiah, just like with Isaiah's prophecies, there is always God's promise. And as we come to the end of this liturgical year, we think of the promise which currently we have from Christ, that he will come again and everything will be made well. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. And just in the same way that Nehemiah and those in the deportations knew of God's promise that at a time they would return, we know that at a time, in a greater way, we will return to that place from whence we came, Eden, from God's perfect love. We are on a journey 
And sometimes, yes, we will throw ourselves on the bus joyfully and happily, and other times we will be kicking and screaming because we've got other things to do. But we are on that journey. We are on the way. And the promise and the destination is never going away. So we pray for the people of God as we continue our journey onward together. And for the church throughout the world, in every place, in every culture, in every language. That we may find those common bonds that draw us together as the people of the promises of Christ. We pray for those who guide and lead us in the faith. For Francis, Bartholomew, Justin, the leaders of the Reformed churches, Together we seek the destination of the heavenly kingdom. We pray for those who have lost their way, for those who have lost their sight of God. The prayers of the people may help them rediscover their heavenly goal. We pray for all in our world who are struggling with the violence of mankind, for those still fleeing to seek safety in foreign lands, for those trying to return home, for those who have lost everything through war and genocide. We pray still for those around our world who are struggling under the virus, for all, shelf, for all who are tending and caring, those who are afflicted and for those sharing vaccines. We pray for all within our own city and communities we know who still struggle with the virus amongst us and those struggling through financial problems and those families who are having difficulties amongst them. We pray for our own families and those who we hold in our hearts all who ask for our help and our prayers. Pray for Ron's family this day. Pray for all on our parish sick list that they may experience the healing power and love of Christ in the way that he seeks it to be given. We pray for the departed Rob, for all whom we love and yet see no more, for those whose years mind falls at this time. And so we pray for ourselves, that we may have courage to follow Christ more closely, to reach out as he seeks us to do so, and to never lose sight of the kingdom. We place our own needs before him as we pray in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up our prayers to you in faith. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers in ways we know and in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through who can this earth this bread to offer, which earth has given him human hands are made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through who can this have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of blessing may be laid open before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that he may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with with our bishops, your clergy, and all your people whom you call to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary, the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, a God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Then you say the word, and I shall be healed. Remember your word to your servant, O Lord, by which you have given me hope. This is my comfort when I am brought low. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly 
mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Christ grant your holiness to follow him in faith, hope, and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.